What's up, guys? Uh, moving on to section five of the CD collection. Just going to keep on chipping away at these videos, picking up where we left off with the last one. We have All That Remains with uh, Four We Are Many. As you can see, that jewel case has seen better days. Uh, I'm not just going to go out of my way to change this one out. It's not an album that I that I pull off the shelf very regularly and, uh, and spin. It's just kind of a uh, placeholder there. I still get the itch every once in a while to listen to All That Remains, but they are, at this point, kind of one of uh, those, I guess you could say, guilty pleasure bands uh, for me. So there's Four We Are Many. Uh, next up, we have All That Remains with Overcome. This was the album where they went super heavy on the auto-tune and the vocals. Uh, this one turned a lot of people off from the band just simply with the amount of auto-tune that they used on the vocals. Uh, it's one of those albums I could take or leave from them. Um, musically, it's not too bad, but they, the auto tune that they did on those vocals was just was over the top it was ridiculous uh next up we have all that remains with a war you cannot win i don't remember much at all about this album if i'm going to be honest i don't i haven't just uh listened to this a whole lot at this point at that, the point that i picked this one up it was almost just out of habit of picking up all that remains stuff it's not they're not a band that i find myself reaching for and listening to just a whole lot uh, anymore. Uh, that's kind of the way with a lot of metalcore bands, kind of falling into that same category. Uh, and then last up for the All That Remains discography that I own, we have uh, The Order of Things. And this is another one that I just don't remember um, much about at all. I have not given this one uh, the attention it probably deserves. Cannot really speak on it just too much. At this point, it just feels almost like a placeholder um, in the collection. I can't imagine that just a ton of people following this channel really follow all that remains anyway so I'm sure you guys are probably glad that that section uh, of the collection is over with uh, next up we have the band Allen uh, with their album about five seconds uh, this is kind of new metal slash hardcore I know that sounds like it would be something absolutely terrible i mean it's kind of cheesy at moments this is something that i listen to when i want to turn the head around the hat around backwards and just kind of uh let loose i mean it's uh it's a bit ridiculous i got this in a grab bag i'm not sure uh which grab bag this came in it may have been that bridge nine records uh grab bag it was somewhere along those lines State, uh, there was another kind of hardcore grab bag i did as well it was in one of those two i'm sure because this is very hardcore type stuff uh but it is new metal mixed with hardcore i take it or leave it i know that sounds probably atrocious to some of you guys i dig it for what it is is it something that i'm going to listen to all the time absolutely not but for what it is it's pretty good uh, next up is an album that i purchased several years ago from Redstream. i still remember purchasing this album this is a progressive uh, death metal band out of Russia. There's going to be a lot of albums out of Russia in this, this particular section of the CD collection. Uh, this is Alley with Amphibious. As I said, this is a progressive death metal. It has very melodic sections and passages going on in this, almost like some acoustic type stuff going on at times. I dig this. Uh, this is not something that is for everybody. But this is a band that I definitely do enjoy. Uh, sadly, this is the only release from Alley that I actually own. But I do dig this album. Uh, just, I mean, the death metal passages in this are, are kind of spread between. They almost have like some Opeth worship going at times. But it is, it is a good album. I do enjoy it. Uh, next up, we're moving to some kind of cheesy power metal. Uh, this is Alma with their debut full length, uh, self-titled. Pretty good album here. Um, probably my second favorite release from Alma. There we go. Uh, I went through like a little phase where I was I was really into this band and uh, I haven't listened to them in a while now but I did go through a time period where uh, I was just into this super they're just like super melodic um, power metal progressive power metal pretty good stuff. Uh, this is my favorite album from Alma. This is Fragile Equality. Unfortunately, 
this uh, was damaged in transit, and I have not purchased a new copy. I need to because they're not expensive at all, uh, especially with this being my favorite release from this band. As you can see, that jewel case is is beat up beyond recognition, but I don't want to change it out just because that's not the only issue. Um, the insert booklet is very badly water damaged. It actually came off a bit onto the disc. As you can see up here, there's pieces of that stuck to the disc. The disc actually plays fine. That's the only reason that I have not picked up a new copy yet. As you can see, even the back of that looks bad. Uh, eventually, I'm going to pull the trigger and get myself a better copy. But that one still plays. It gets the job done, and I do enjoy that album. Uh, next up, we have Alma with Motion. I haven't spent just a ton of time with Motion. This is probably um, my least favorite release from their discography. Uh, this one, it felt like they were going a little bit more to the progressive side of things, and it's just not not what I wanted from Alma. So uh, this is one that I could actually, I mean, I could I could probably do without. I, st I still give it a spin here and there, but it's not, as I said, it's just probably my least favorite uh, release in their discography. And then the last one that I own from them is Unfold. I think this is their next to last full length. They have one that came out after this that I have not uh, pulled the trigger on. There will be a point in time I know where I want to listen to some more All My, kind of get back into uh, that, that swing of things. I'm very moody with my listens. When I circle back and I'm uh, listening to this kind of uh, melodic power metal type stuff, I'll probably go on and finish out their discography and pick up a, a better um a better copy of Fragile Equality, but uh, this one is Unfold. Next up, uh, we have probably the most controversial uh, release in this in this uh, update or in this section of the CD collection. This is a project called, called Alistair, Alistair 88 with a hyper, Hyperbian Memories, and this is NSBM. So I know uh, that's probably like an auto thumbs down from someone. I get it. Uh, this came in a grab bag that I purchased at one point. I'm wanting to say it was either like a red string grab bag. It was a, a black metal specific grab bag. I remember, I just don't particularly remember which one that this came in. Um, I was listening to it and I was like, man, I, I, I really dig this. And I got the, I pulled the case and the, the, inserts out and I got to looking at it I was like wow this is uh this is pretty this is pretty uh pretty rough as far as the way this stuff goes um had I not listened to it first I probably would not even have kept that in the collection just to, from uh, some of the um extreme ideologies on there that stuff kind of turns me off when you know but the music was good so it's still in the collection uh, for what it is. Next up, we have a soundtrack that I thought was awesome at one point in my life. Uh, this is Alone in the Dark soundtrack. Uh, this has Cradle of Filth in Flames. I mean, it's like a who's who of Nuclear Blast lined up in, around the 2005 era. I remember uh, thinking how heavy this was at one point. It's almost uh, humorous now looking back, but... For what it is, it's still a very good uh, soundtrack. It's got some good material on this. It's two discs. I'm not going to show both discs. It even has the old uh, Nuclear Blast kind of order form and promotional thing still in there. But yeah, it's got uh, Mastodon, Hypocrisy, Arch Enemies on there. I'm not a huge Arch Enemy fan. Uh, Exodus, Machine Head, Lacuna Coil. I mean, everybody who was a uh, who's who kind of a 2005 is on that soundtrack uh next up this is kind of crusty hardcore type stuff this is alpinist with a uh it's a double it's got two uh, two releases on one disc it's got licked larum and uh, minus mich they are a german if you couldn't get that from the album titles they are a german kind of crusty hardcore band very good stuff uh quite overlooked this was released on southern lord um, it was limited to 2,000 copies, which is an insane amount of copies these days. Uh, 
in the past, it wasn't unheard of to have that many pressed. I know that there's a lot of underground type stuff that only does like 75 to 50 CD copies now. But this is actually really good. Uh, if you're into hardcore, you're into crust, I, I would definitely recommend checking out Alpinist. Uh, the Licked Larum uh, portion of this, I guess, compilation um, is my favorite half of I guess half of this release it's got the two it's got both releases on there but the lick the lamb uh, portion of that is probably my favorite uh, we've got some more power metal uh, this is Al Altair with uh, Lost to Eden uh, this is just cheesy Italian power metal I mean I don't know any other way to put it uh, they released an album after this that I do not own that the band uh, they kind of improved as far as their structures and their type stuff and uh, as a band in a whole, but th this album is fun. I do enjoy this. It's just cheesy fantasy theme, uh, power metal, kind of almost Middle Earth type themes going on there with elves and everything else, but I dig it. Uh, next up, we have some doom metal. This is Altar of Oblivion with their Barren Grounds EP. Uh, this was released through Shadow Kingdom. I believe this uh, came out in 2016. I'm wanting to say it may have come out originally before then, before uh, Shadow Kingdom actually released it. It's the only thing that I own from Altar of Oblivion. I want to pick up some more uh, stuff from their discography because I, I do remember enjoying this, uh, this EP quite a bit. Uh, I have not listened to it in a while. I believe I got this on a Hell's Headbangers deal when they had... Uh, so many CDs for a certain price or that type of stuff. I'm wanting to say that's where this came from. And uh, it was a blind buy at the time and I really dug it. So uh, I really need to get some more of their material in my collection. It's just uh, always a theme. I mean, that's just a theme of being a collector. You're always wanting to add more. And sometimes the, the funds and the space just aren't there. Uh, next up, we have some, um, I guess, dark ambient noise type stuff this is altar of sorrow uh this is another russian project this uh was released on uh desolation productions uh it's just a cdr as you can see uh not much to it it is numbered 36 out of 50 the title is in russian i believe it roughly translates to watchman of a pole uh it's just Ambience, kind of dark ambience, uh, weird type stuff, but what can I say? I'm weird. Uh, next up is an album that I had not ever heard of before I got this in a grab bag. It, uh, and I had never even heard of this band, thought of this album, nothing. And after I got my copy, it seemed like I saw this popping up everywhere. This is Altered Aeon with Dispiritism. Uh, this is a nice little slab of thrash metal. This came out in 2004. And uh, as I said, I had never heard of it until I, I can't remember what grab bag it was that I got this in. It may have been a metalhead box, but I, I'm thinking it was in a, a an actual grab bag. But I, I cannot remember. Uh, it was released on Black Lotus Records back in 2004. But it is a just a nice slab of thrash metal. Um, I'm forgetting where this band originates from. Uh, part of me is wanting to say Sweden, but I just uh, I can't remember at this point in time but it is good i do uh i do i am an advocate for this release especially if you're into like that modern thrash sound definitely check out altered aeon with uh dispirit dispiritism so uh changing gears again there's a little bit of everything in this uh actual section of the collection this is some christian hardcore uh this is alters with conclusions Got this in a Face Down Records grab bag uh, several years ago. This is one of the albums that I actually kept out of that. I don't have just a ton of that stuff left in the collection, but this is one that I enjoyed enough to, to keep around. Uh, it is what it is. It's a uh, Christian-based hardcore. There was a ton of that stuff out there. Uh, 2012, around that time period of 2010 to, through 2012, I'd say even a little bit before 2010, there was just like this huge influx of Christian deathcore, Christian hardcore. Altars was right there in the mix. Uh, and this is one that I actually do enjoy. Next up, we have changing gears again. We have some uh, 
blackened I guess it is, this is folk slash black metal. Uh, this is Alt Vader with Chronicon. A lot of people do not uh, like this album. I dig it. I like the folky parts on this especially. Uh, my biggest qualm with this release is just like the transitions. When they transition from almost like that acoustic kind of folky sound into the uh, black metal passages. It's very rough. The, the, transvi the, <clears throat> the transitions to that... Are, are very lacking um it's not a smooth transition at all i do i dig the folky parts on this though quite a bit they are they are talented musicians uh, it's just one of those albums i haven't listened to it in a long time i do like it but it's not going to be something that i just pull off immediately and listen to uh next up we have alvheim with ayat fortied uh this is viking themed black metal uh this is kind of Bathory, heavy Bathory influence from the the Viking era Bathory. I'm wanting to say, uh, especially like Nordland type stuff. Great stuff. I, I dig this quite a bit. Uh, it's got very mixed reviews on Metal Archives. I got this for like a dollar, somewhere between a dollar and three dollars. I can't remember, and it was well worth every penny that I spent on this. I I really like this quite a bit. Um, some of you following this channel would probably like it as well. Like I said, it's just like black and Viking. I know Viking metal isn't a genre. Viking themed black metal, I guess. Uh, when you say Viking, black and Viking metal, though, you kind of get a mindset. You kind of know what you're getting into upon uh, entering a listen to that release. Uh, next up, we have some more thrash metal. I believe this band is out of Finland. Um, it's a band, it's a it's an album that I have a love hate relationship with. I think I've owned this a couple of times already. I, I've gotten rid of it and then seek it out and get it again. So I, I guess it's just in the collection to stay. This is Am I Blood with uh, Agitation. This band, you can tell, loves Metallica. Just uh, when you listen to this, you can tell that there's a heavy Metallica influence going on. This was released in Nuclear Blast back in 1998. So it's been around a while. It has the old school. Let me see if I can get this out of here. This is how old this is. It has the... Uh, old school nuclear blast little survey and giveaway entry going on there inside of it I, i'm, I'm going to keep that with it just uh for nostalgia's sake there's the inside and the actual disc pretty good stuff it's just um uh, like i said you can tell that they have a heavy 90s metallica uh worship going on here but it's just one of those albums as i said i have a, a love hate relationship with uh, next up is a release that is absolutely terrible. This is Amazing Device with uh, The Quiet Room. I'm just kidding. This is great. I have it for sale on my Discogs for like $8 shipped in the U.S. Go buy it. Uh, this is Amazing Device with uh, The Quiet Room. I, I don't like this at all. Got this in a Tribunal Records grabber or dive bomb. It was I think it was a Tribunal Records uh, grab bag. I don't know why it's still on the shelf, to be honest with you. Uh, I, I, I don't dig this. It's emo core. I'm just going to read the uh, the little hype sticker. The Quiet Room delivers a flurry of uplifting and inspiring emo core styled melodies. Um, recommended for fans of Incubus, Glassjaw, Faith No More, and Deftones. Deftones is good. Uh, everybody else on that list I can, I can do without. And it has a guest appearance by... Ian Watkins of the Lost Prophets. So yeah, that's that's how bad that is. I'm not going to spend any more time with that. If you like that, I'm not knocking you. Like I said, it's for sale on my Discogs. Please go buy it and get it off my shelf. Uh, next up, probably my favorite release that uh, that I've reached thus far in this whole little stack that I've gone through. Uh, this is more Russian metal. This is a doom, I guess kind of gothic doom uh, band out of Russia. This is a Madaria with Unheard Prayer. Uh, this has some, it's almost like uh, My Dying Bride meets Draconian, like uh, mid, mid era Draconian and uh, My Dying Bride had a baby and you get a Madaria. Pretty good stuff. Um, I dig it. I want to pick up their previous album. I think that's the only two full links that they released. They have one before this. I do not own it. I would like to own it. So go buy the uh, Amazing Device album from me. And I will pick up their, I'll hunt down a copy 
of Amadaria's uh, previous full length. But yeah, I really dig that one. Like I said, it's just kind of like my dying bride meets uh, draconian. Uh, next up, we have some post black metal out of France. Uh, this is Amos Suras with their EP entitled Ruins H Humains. Ruin Humain? Yeah. Uh, pretty good stuff. Um, unfortunately, Amos Suras is no more. I believe they are split up. They had a split. They had this EP and then like a split EP with another project and then the one full length. I have this EP and the full length. I don't have the split. I, I wasn't a huge fan of that. So I think I own all of the material from Amosiris that I like. Here is the full length. Uh, this one, I believe, is self titled. It, unfortunately, it was in that Pro uh, Pro Jewel, Pro CD Jewel case. Not a big fan of those, but I am a, a, a pretty big fan of this release. Good stuff. I do wish that they were around had stuck around longer to put out a little bit more material but I, I am especially this uh this full length i am a, a big fan of this have not listened to it in a, in a long time i need to uh dust this one off and give it a spin because i did enjoy this quite a bit uh, next up more russian metal go figure this is a black metal band um i'm gonna butcher this a mez a -pock. i know that's probably not even pronounced right because it's in the russian letters that's loosely what it looks like to me with a diabolical finale mortem uh, this is just satanic black metal about 50 minutes of pretty good straightforward black metal have not listened to it in a while uh, pretty sure I got this from red stream but I do I do dig this album uh, they've got several releases out fortunately this is the only release from them that I do own but I do dig this quite a bit I thought it was going to have like a folky uh, kind of vibe going on, but it's mainly just straightforward black metal. Next up, we have uh, some progressive black metal. Uh, this is Amiensis. I believe this band is out of either South Carolina or North Carolina. I can't remember. Uh, this is their second full length entitled Ascension. This was actually my introduction to Amiensis, and uh, I dig this one quite a bit. I think this came out in 2015, I want to say. Uh, I purchased this straight from the band on Bandcamp. Uh, that was just about the time that I was really getting into, initially getting on Bandcamp. Um, the the wheels were in motion for this channel to get started. So it was right in that heyday of where uh, heavy metal was kind of taking a, a, uh, a priority spot in life. And so I guess it has a little bit of sentimental value as far as that goes, but it is a pretty good release. And then I have their newest release, uh, released this year on Transcending Records, entitled Abe Reaction. Uh, it's funny, this is their second and third release. To listen to this album and then listen to their next full length, there's five years in between, but the maturity and the, uh, the progression of the band going from this to this is, is a bit wild. Um, just the, the musically just the structures and that type stuff, just how they've uh, matured. And this one just feels like a more intelligent release. So it's crazy how that, that happens, how you can kind of follow a band and uh, see that that kind of natural progression. There's the actual disc just on this digipack. Like I said, this one came out this year on uh, Transcending Records. So that's it for Section 5. Uh, I don't know when I'll do Section 6. I just kind of knock these off when I have the time. But that's all for today. Stay classy.